All right, poor people, we need to talk. Now, I wanted to ask you poor people a question, by the way. Do you ever get tired of being poor? Are you tired of watching these dirtbag influencers like me making more money than you and you can't even get the job as a software engineer? Are you tired of funding two wars at the same time in Ukraine and Israel while you can't even buy yourself a house here? It's time to talk about Bitcoin. Bitcoin. And if you actually took a look at my video I made 11 months ago, why I'm buying Bitcoin, and I was probably one of the few people who have been calling this right the whole time, we can see the price of Bitcoin has skyrocketed about 100% since I made that call. Hey, maybe you should have actually been listening to me instead of thinking that you're smarter than some ex-Google tech lead. Oh, you think you're so smart? And so you see, this is the exact problem. Everyone out there, yourself included, thinks that you're smarter than me because you're wearing those Gucci jeans and some Ray-Ban sunglasses and just because of that you think you have higher status than me because I'm holding on to some digital fake money out here, Bitcoin. Look at that, 35,000 here. You could have been in on this game. And you know, I just have to say I told you so. I mean, 11 months ago, I made this call and I also said I'm selling Ethereum at that time. And if we take a look at the BTC ETH ratio, we can see that Bitcoin has been skyrocketing against Ethereum, which was the trade that I recommended in case you wanted to hedge a bit. And you can see Bitcoin has gone up like 40% against Ethereum in the past year. Now, what's been the cause of this Bitcoin rally? Well, weirdly, the bottom coincided with the collapse of FTX in November of last year, where Basically, a lot of people thought they were buying Bitcoin, but then FTX took the customer funds and decided to buy like Robinhood stock or a lawyer fees with that. And so nobody was actually buying Bitcoin the whole entire time. Now people are actually buying this stuff and not just imagining they were buying it. Not to mention there were reports that FTX was suppressing the price of Bitcoin under 20,000 for the months of September and October or so. So what's going on with this Bitcoin spot ETF and why is now possibly the eminent time for it? Because we all know Bitcoin spot ETFs have been filed for years actually. In 2020, Vanek maybe filed the first one. And the SEC has just been stalling, dragging their feet on this. Why is now possibly the time to buy? Well, the reason is because we can take a look at the filing deadlines. The final deadline for the very first ETF here coming in for ARC, Bitcoin ETF, is January 10th, 2024. And the SEC must make a decision by January about whether this ETF is going to move forward or not. Okay, and so a lot of the people are forecasting that this is the date at which the very first Bitcoin ETF may be approved in the US. And with this approval, they're not going to just approve one, they're probably going to approve all of these. And there are 12 Bitcoin ETFs in motion here. And all of these may be approved simultaneously around this deadline, January 10th, 2024. Now that's not the only deadline actually, that's just the final deadline for the ARC ETF. But we can see there's actually a first deadline here for two other Bitcoin ETFs, November 17th, and then there's a second deadline, November 21st. And then there's another second deadline here, January 1st. So a lot of these deadlines are coming in within the next two, three months or so. Now, to me, one of the most compelling reasons you may want to be on the bullish side of this is simply looking at the risk reward ratio. It's like, what's your upside and what's your downside? On the upside, if this spot ETF gets approved, you're going to have 12 Bitcoin ETFs coming into play. And then that's probably going to put into motion many other countries starting to adopt Bitcoin ETFs and a lot of banks starting to file this stuff because everybody wants to collect in on the fees once you have a few people starting to collect all the lucrative, profitable trading fees from having these ETFs. Well, everybody's going to want to get in on it. And these guys may have to start acquiring this asset very rapidly in order to just sell to their customers. And there's going to be a lot of institutional demand for this. Maybe companies want a little bit of Bitcoin on their balance sheets. You may see retirement accounts, trust accounts, various businesses. We can see what happened when the gold ETF was approved in 2004, actually. The price of gold went up 400% and it basically stayed high. And this kind of reflects how much demand there is for an asset like this, a safe haven asset. And Bitcoin has been called exponential gold. In fact, this was just last week by none other than the Fidelity Director of Global Macro. So that's the upside, a potential 4x based on the price action of the GOAT ETF. Now on the downside, let's say the SEC just rejects the filings or delays it. Well, we've basically had that for years. That's just the status quo. You know, I don't think the price of Bitcoin would move that much. Nobody would be particularly surprised and they would simply delay to another future date or at the worst case, maybe the price would go down to say 30,000 or something, right? Maybe it would drop 10, 20%, but the risk reward ratio still sounds quite appealing to me if you're looking at the potential 4X versus maybe, you know, 10, 20% downside or so. 
But at the same time, if we take a look at the holders of Bitcoin, two thirds of all Bitcoin has not moved in over a year. So a lot of people who have this asset, they're long term holders of this. They're not just trading it in and out. And that Fidelity director made this chart noting that Bitcoin is basically in a whole different universe when you look at its risk reward ratio, because you can see, yes, Bitcoin is very risky, it's very volatile, but its reward ratio is also very high. And that's simply because Bitcoin has gone down a lot, down 50% before, but it's also gone up like 80, over 100% actually this year. And they also called out gold here. You can see that when you look at the gold drawdown and rally from the past two years, gold has gone down just 1% and up 22%. So gold actually has a pretty decent risk reward ratio here as well. You know, the thing about gold, though, is it's a fairly old market, whereas Bitcoin is really the birth of a brand new asset class, digital exponential gold. And you're going to be around to tell your grandkids that you're around for this birth of an asset class and you decided to just sit on the sidelines because you wanted to play it safe. You were just too scared, kind of shy, right? kind of timid. Or you can tell them you went all in hog wild and put everything into Bitcoin and then lost all your assets exponentially. So what's it gonna be? But you know what? You only live once, YOLO. And I don't think that's gonna happen either because the Bitcoin spot ETF, in my personal opinion, is simply a matter of when and not if. And the reason is because crypto adoption and Bitcoin purchases and finance tools, they're already here, right? A lot of the people are already buying this stuff. The worms out of the can and they're just crawling around everywhere. You can't put these worms back into the can. Is that the metaphor here? We can take a look at Robinhood Crypto. Recently, they just announced they are supported in Nevada now, right? This was last month. And so adoption is already increasing. Fidelity Crypto went live last March, giving millions of retail customers access to Bitcoin, Ethereum. And so you've already got millions of people on Robinhood, Fidelity, trading crypto. And these are mainstream platforms. It's not like just a few random people. You can't just shut this down anymore. You've got millions of Americans holding onto this stuff. Is the SEC going to just say, hey, you know what? This is all just banned now. I mean, that would just destroy the wealth of uh, me. A spot ETF would really be no different than Fidelity Crypto or Robinhood Crypto, where customers for these two platforms at least can already trade crypto assets at spot prices. And so I think if anything, I mean, yes, the SEC can reject the spot ETFs, but then that leaves the space in a really weird area where then every brokerage is going to have to launch a crypto version of its exchange. Like you're going to have Schwab Crypto or Morgan Stanley Crypto. It's not like people can't set up these investment products on their own and custody through Coinbase or whatever. Like you can do it, but it's just easier to have a spot ETF so that they don't have to have these separate products. People are already doing this stuff anyway. You've already got the crypto futures ETFs that the SEC has already approved. They might as well at this point approve the spot ETFs in my personal opinion such that they can retain some authority over this space and remain relevant. You know some other countries have already approved Bitcoin ETFs like Canada, Germany, Jersey, Brazil, Australia, Hong Kong is looking at this just recently they may approve this as well and that's because a lot of these financial industries like BlackRock, Fidelity they're going to want those fees. Right? There's a lot of money to be made in these ETFs because they want about half a percent to 1% fees. And a lot of these ETFs are going to be going through Coinbase for custody. Coinbase chief operating officer noted that we are ready to hit the ground running. This should add credibility to the market. We'll see increased liquidity and market stability, such as with the gold ETF. Coinbase noted here, 52 million Americans already own crypto today. With current regulatory overhang and for Coinbase, they noted here that they will be the custodian for multiple spot Bitcoin ETFs, giving them a new revenue source. The primary way they will monetize ETFs directly in the near term future is through custody fees. So maybe buying Coinbase stock is yet another way to speculate on ETF approvals. And we can see Coinbase stock has shot up about 15% in just the last month. And the timing now may be somewhat critical. Even JP Morgan here noted that they're expecting multiple spot Bitcoin ETF approvals to come possibly within just months because they noted here that if the SEC were to reject more spot Bitcoin ETF applications, it may face legal action and lawsuit from the various applicants. I mean, they could have some of the largest financial institutions like BlackRock, Fidelity, ARC, Grayscale, Van Eck suing the SEC after this. And so the SEC has already been backing down just last month. They declined to appeal a ruling where they must now reconsider a bid from Grayscale for a spot Bitcoin ETF. Take a look at the Bitcoin hash rate here in blue. This is the difficulty security of the network. It is at all time highs, basically. And we have the Bitcoin halving coming up in April of next year, which will reduce the number of mine rewards by half. So overall, what does this mean? Maybe flip a coin is a 50-50 decision. 
I think few things in life are 50-50. Just because you have a choice to buy or not, that doesn't mean it's a 50-50 result. Actually, the choice is obvious in hindsight. It's like a 99 to 1 choice. It's like, that, it's obvious. Clearly, you should do choice A. In fact, I would go all in on choice A. I mean, you would be a fool not to. In hindsight, everybody would have said, you should, like, why didn't you just pick choice A? It's so obvious. Everybody knew that, right? It's like, just, it's so clear. Now, what is choice A? Am I talking about gold, treasuries, cash reserves, real estate? All right, but let's not be silly here. I mean, seriously, we know what the right obvious answers in life are, right? Clearly, the correct investment, choice A. And look, if you don't get it, I don't have time to try and convince you. Sorry. But that'll do it for me. Hope you enjoyed the video. See you in the next one. Thanks. Bye.